The choice of Littleton could mean hundreds of jobs for Canterbury. The Russians want a major fishing base in the South Pacific, and lobby groups from Littleton and New Plymouth have recently returned from putting their case to the Russians in Moscow. The decision should be made by the Soviet government sometime in the next six months. And if it goes our way, it could be the most important thing to happen to the region in years. At 6.30 this morning, the Ms. Krilova tied up at Littleton, after five months at sea. She's one of a fleet of Soviet trawlers that call regularly for provisioning and for crew changing and to discharge their catch. For 10 years, Soviet trawlers have used Littleton. It's a small trade, but next year that could all change and Littleton would never be the same again. It's the size of this project that's got to be appreciated. This is not just a few ships a year. This is really big. It's going to mean at least a hundred ships a year coming into Littleton for maintenance and repairs. But add to that the extra ships that come in for provisioning and for crew changeovers, and we could be talking of something like a thousand ships, a thousand Russian fishing boats coming into Littleton every year. Those thousand ships are fishing out in the South Pacific with several thousand more. Currently, they use Lima in Peru and Singapore as servicing bases, but the Russians want a base in our part of the world. A Canterbury consortium wants that base at Littleton. The consortium comprises the Littleton Port Company, the two Littleton engineering firms, Littleton Engineering and Sinclair Melbourne. One is owned by Cable Price Downer, the other may well be shortly. Also in the consortium, the airport company, because the Russians want crews to be flown in and out using Soviet planes. Also in the consortium, Sovens, the Russian arm of the dairy board. And lastly, scale shipping. Chief Executive Ross Fast and General Manager Michael Chin are frequent visitors to the Soviet Union. Their company has been dealing with Russian shipping for 40 years. Scales handles all the Russian fishing trade through Littleton. Littleton has the most facilities in place that the Russians would require uh, far more than any other port in New Zealand. What would be the value of a base here to Canterbury? In dollar terms, it, it would be around 100 million US dollars per year, assuming they serviced uh, 100 vessels. Littleton may well be ideal for the Russians. It has spare wharf space and flat land to build plant. One of the real strengths of Littleton is its dry dock. One wonders if the people who built the dock more than 100 years ago ever dreamed it could be used in the sales pitch for Russian trawlers to come here. Most of the Russian trawlers will in fact fit in the dock as it is, but there's one class that is simply too big. But the biggest trawlers are only a little wider than this ship. The dock can be modified for about $2 million. Right alongside is Sinclair Melbourne's new works. Littleton's two engineering firms reckon they could handle the enormous job of repairing at least 100 ships a year firms elsewhere in Christchurch would inevitably be involved. Mercer's Stainless Steel's general manager Roger Clark and factory manager Jack Horrocks have done work on Russian trawlers before. One job can be worth $20,000 to this firm. Uh, most of these ships semi-process the fish that they catch uh, to the frozen state on board. So they all have some sort of fish processing facility. And uh, the experience that we've gained over a hundred years of operation in freezing works. It has been very useful in uh, repairing and uh, changing this fish processing equipment on board a variety of ships. Would you have to take on more staff? That's quite possible. Uh, I've heard uh, different estimates of the number of ships that might be calling here. And of course, since the work would be mainly repair, it's very difficult to predict precisely how much work there would be. But when one of these ships comes to Littleton, it's not just an engineering matter. It's possible that up to a million dollars could be spent here on one ship, but only some of that is on the ship itself. The Brian McSherry is a ship's provador. He supplies the ships oh, sorry, with everything they need, from light bulbs to vegetables. 1100. Yep, 1,100 cabbage, 200 beetroot. This is all in kilo. 
the ship may arrive within 24 hours. It's usually in port for about uh, maybe 12 hours. Uh, we have to have an organization behind us that can supply up to, well, $20,000 worth of stores in that time. Are there any special foods? Well, they, they don't eat lettuce for a start. They don't even know what a lettuce is, or seem, seem as though they don't. Um, cucumbers are eaten as apples. Cucumber is one of the main uh, staple foods. Chicken, mainly. Uh, not a great deal of old mutton, not very much at all. Beef, four quarters of beef. Um, dairy products, we'll, we'll, uh, we can produce. In fact, they've only just found yogurt. That's tremendous. We, we can put pellet loads of yogurt on uh, strawberries and raspberries and stuff like that. It's, it's really something. When 90 Russians come to Littleton at the end of a five-month spell at sea, they have money to spend. Aside from the repairs to the ship, $60,000 could come ashore. The fishermen spend up large before going home. The number of things they buy, especially things to take home, like so spark plugs, filters, universal joints is a strange one. Um, universal for, joints? For cars. They? they can't buy car parts in, in Russia. They have a lot of problems. They have a very large black market over there, and it's very hard to buy anything for motor cars over there. And Russian seamen seem to have a lot of motor cars. The Russians buy things that would never occur to us. They buy pattern books, they buy second hand sewing machines, they buy jeans, and they buy videos too. All these they take home, currently by sea. But the Russians want landing rights at Christchurch for their airline Aeroflot, so the crews can fly in and out. The government seems likely to grant that permission quite soon. It's just one of the difficulties yet to be ironed out. The Russians are also interested in the factory ships and motherships repairing in New Zealand, but that would require a complete new dock facility, probably uh, by way of a floating dock. Would their desire to have the motherships and factory ships repaired here, does that put the, the Russian base in jeopardy if they can't do that? Uh, not in my view, because uh, unlike the fishing ships, uh, uh, they travel all around the Pacific uh, and they could very easily be serviced in places like Singapore. Good morning, Captain. What sort of voyage have you had? Like most Russian ship's masters, Anatoly Eremin likes coming to Littleton. It reminds him of his home in eastern Russia. How do the Russian crews like Littleton? You see, after being uh, several months uh, at sea, it seems to me that they have very high impression of Littleton. And apart from this, you see, uh, Christchurch situated not far from Littleton, so they have uh, uh, plenty of chances uh, uh, while having a rest here uh, just to get acquainted with uh, New Zealand, uh, one of the biggest uh, cities. The uh, attitude of New Zealanders are quite friendly and uh, you see we have never had any problems here. So what do you reckon our chances are of getting the base here? I think that Littleton's got the best chance of, of, of any centre in Australia or New Zealand. It's likely to be a tremendous boost for industry in Canterbury, but even more so for the providers of services and food and uh, the airport and, uh, and the port. Our biggest problem in Canterbury today is unemployment. In, in the whole country is unemployment. Now this is going to be, oh, just fantastic as far as uh, product export. We must realize that everything we put on us